Hi guys, welcome to Gemma B Makes. I'm Gemma and this is my crafty channel where I talk about all the things that I've been making over the past couple of weeks. I tend to talk about knitting, crochet, spinning, um, any kind of sewing, um, any kind of uh, fibery, crafty goodness I like to take part in. I am coming to you from Leeds in West Yorkshire. I think I would like to call this um, season two, part two, because last week's episode, um, I would like to put um, behind us all, uh, pretend that we didn't watch it, and come back today nice and new and refreshed and in my new space, because the, the lighting last week was not my friend and the sound last week was not my friend. And um, yeah, I was so excited about having a new space. I didn't think about, um, anything really. I just wanted to talk to you guys because it had been such a long time since I last seen you and um, yeah, if only we had have waited. <laughs> so this is my new crafty space. I have got a little bit of glass, glasses glare but I think you're just gonna have to get over that. I can't do anything about it. Um, I'm sorry, I'm talking to myself then. Editing me, get over it. There's nothing you can do about it. I've got lots and lots of things to talk to you about. Still, it was only two weeks since I last spoke to you and I haven't actually really done any knitting so I don't have much progress to show you but I've still got things that I've done over the six week holidays while the children were off school that I still haven't talked to you guys about. So I'm gonna show you those things today. It is very spinning heavy and um, crochet heavy. So there you go. I'm gonna start, I think, with um, the tiny little bit of knitting progress that I have done because there's, there's not much to show you guys. So, did I just headbutt? This is gonna be awkward. There's gonna be lots of headshots. Everything's on the floor. I'm so used to having everything just around me because I'm always sat on the floor. I'm gonna have to get used to editing. <laughs> anyway, in my bag, by the Fibre Fox, which is amazing, <gasps> which I, who I met at Yarndale, which I'll talk all about in a little bit. Yarndale. Um, so, but yes, in my Fibre Fox bag, I have the Elton by Hohi Locatelli. Now this is a cardigan that gets tangled no matter how I put it away in the bag, <laughs> because it is at that state where, um, there's lots of ends and there's lots of pieces to it. Well, it's one piece, but it's a bit of a mess. So, we have a shoulder and we have another shoulder that I'm working on. So last time I spoke to you guys, I had a full front, all back, and another full side at the front. And I'd made such a mess of it um, that I ended up just chopping a big chunk of it off. Um, I put the increases on the wrong side and the thought of pulling all this out um, really hurt my brain. I was like, I don't want to frog more hair. So what I've done is I've just cut it off. Um, picked up the stitches, cut it off and started knitting. And if I need any yarn, it's here at the end, but I don't think I'm going to need it. So I'll keep it just in case, but I don't think I'm going to need it. Um, yeah, apart from the little annoyance um, of chopping off the full front. I'm nearly back to where I was. I've nearly finished this full front. I think a couple more stripes. I think I have to do eight. Actually, the pattern calls for so many centimetres and I've heard and I've read on Ravelry and my friends have said that actually the arms can be a little bit tight and I've got bigger arms. So what I've done is I've done a couple extra rows and hopefully that should have some extra stitches around the arms to get a bigger size. I hope. <laughs> I think that's what I need to do. So the yarn that I'm using is my own um, hand dyed merino um, in just this navy blue colour and the mohair I'm using is North Shire Yarns 72% um, kid mohair and 28% silk in this colourway Dean. Yeah, I um, when I first started this, I think I mentioned this last week, but when I first started this, um, I thought it was going to be a 
I didn't think I'd actually like knitting on it. I thought the mohair was a little bit awkward compared to, because they're different sizes, different size yarns. I thought it was going to be a bit more like awkward, but actually it was just because I was knitting in the height of summer and it was a bit sweaty. You can't knit with more hair when you're sweaty. And actually now it's cooled down. I'm, I'm, this is the thing that I'm gravitating towards at the minute. I'm, I'm enjoying knitting on this. Now that it's been surgeried, that's what I've enjoyed knitting on. Although you can see that actually it's not that much progress. Um, I do have one more sweater whip. Okay, my other project is kept in my own handmade bag. And this is the Wool and Honey Sweater by Andrea Maori. And I am knitting this for my mum, hopefully for her birthday, but maybe for Christmas. <laughs> my mum's birthday is on Halloween. So I've got a full month, I think I can easily get that done. But how cool is that honeycomb pattern? I've got, I think, one more, one more? Oh, I think I've got about 10 more rows and I split for the sleeves and then hopefully I, I, I think it's so effective this honeycomb pattern and they're just drop stitches really really easy knitting um, and I am knitting this out of Gerald's Heritage 4 ply so it's a it's 55% wool 25% acrylic and 20% nylon it's very, very soft and my friend was getting rid of this in a de-stash and the whole bag of five balls is 15 quid. Bargain. <laughs> it's a bargain jumper and it's really, really nice and soft and yeah, lovely um, next to me, next to skin wearable. Very nice. So those are my two knitting projects that I have been picking up periodically. I've just been swapping between those two. But um, in all honesty, for the past two weeks, I have had the least amount of mojo I've had in a very long time. I've just not been bothered at all um, to pick up any knitting on an evening. I'm not even watching TV. I'm literally scrolling on TikTok and playing Bricks and Candy Crush. My mind has just seemed to have needed to like switch off for like, well, for a week, and now I went to Yarndale, and the mojo is back. I just needed to squish things again. I'm happy that I went to squish things. I'll tell you about it in a minute. <laughs> okay, so that's my knitting. I have had some crocheted finished objects to show you. So, um, Friends that have been here a long time um, know that I like to take part in the crochet alongs by the Mr. Crochet Project. Although not this one. Oh, the last one. Um, but the stash of shells that happened, I think, uh, two, three years ago now, I really, really enjoyed. And it was a scrap busting. Um, I, I will show you the original one that I made. It was very, very scrappy. I made it with all of my leftovers of hand spun yarn. So it's all hand spun, it's all all my really early stuff. Um, all this this one here, this middle one, is the reason I don't actually wear it because it's really itchy. It's got like cat it's camel and alpaca and something, and it was lovely to spin, but it's horrible to wear. Um, yeah, this stuff's like, this one's really chunky. This stuff's really chunky. Anyway, so that was how big it is. It's absolutely massive. It's taller than me. I, th I think it's about, I'd say it's about seven foot long. It's massive. Um, but I never knew what to do with it because that beast in the middle was itchy and I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't wear it. So what I decided to do was make more of these, more out of my hand spun uh, scraps and then eventually I could make quite a few of them and crochet them together and make a blanket out of them somehow. So I finished a second one. Now I haven't blocked it because my thinking is if I'm going to be making a blanket I don't think I need to block them. I might see how they all fit together at the end. But this is the one that I finished. So it goes all the way. All is this yellow one here, 
um, was my first ever spun on a spindle, ever, so ever hand spun, that one. Um, this one was my first ever hand dyed one. I dyed fibre with Julie on the day out. This was lovely to spin. I have no idea what this was. I think I dyed this as well with Julie and I just grabbed a fibre out of a back, out of the bucket. It's funny, isn't it? Which ones do you remember? A little bit of my jumpers here. Oh, it's the end. So there you go. So it's Stash of Shells by the Crochet Project number two. And it just swaps between three different uh, crochet stitches and it just kind of increases and decreases on either side so that you're working in the it's really cool, it's really effective and it should give me a kind of zigzaggy um, blanket effect if I decide to go that way or I can carry on the same way. I haven't decided yet. I'll, I'll decide when I get closer to the, set, to the end. But this was... no, nope, that's the wrong bag. <laughs> this is my bag of um, hand spun scraps. So, and we're down to like here now. So it is scrap busting, because this was full. Um, what have I got in here? So a lot, lot of it now is I've used all my kind of chunky early stuff in, in these two, these two stash of shells. And now what I'm getting is because I've been spinning for jumpers, I'm getting lots of jumper weight yarn. Um, and I, don't, I think it, I need some more chunky stuff to go in because the mix of the different weights in, this, in these ones Actually, they work quite well and they give it lots of texture and I kind of want to keep that texture. So, what I've been doing is spinning some textured yarn. So, <laughs> this is going to be quite amusing. Everything's just like down here, piled around. <laughs> just trough through it. At the end, it's going, to, uh, it's going to be everywhere, isn't it? Anyway, it's all good. It's happy. Um, so, textured spinning. I spun this little dude. Let's see if I can... Got some super texture on there. This was a bat um, given to me by my friend Jasmine. Uh, hey Jazz. Um, and th this was super duper fun. So what I'll have done, in fact I've still got enough um, fibre to probably do another one of these skeins. Um, but I've spin everything on my eel wheel nano and all I did was I spun a full bobbin full of this uh, amazing like 80s craziness. Um, I spun a full bobbin and then I wound it into a ball and I plied it, one from the inside, one from the outside to give me this amount. I don't know how much is here, how much yardage, but it's all for the blanket. So that was fun and I've got some more to spin of that as well. I also spun this giant braid. So this was a braid of fibre from Hilltop, Hilltop Cloud. Um, I nearly said Hilltop Katie then. She is Katie from Hilltop Cloud. And it was 120 grams of South Down, I think. I think it was. I'll have a little look and I'll put it on the screen if I'm, if I'm wrong, if it's not South Down. Um, I spun this as a traditional three ply. I split the braid into three, straight down the middle, and I spun it from end to end, trying to get some sort of little bit of a stripe going on. Um, as you can imagine, it didn't happen straight away. It didn't happen, um, but it's got a really, really nice fractal to it. Um, it's very nice, but it's all got. It's going for the blanket, so I spun it for the blanket just to get a little bit of more of these uh, purpley tones because a lot of the stuff that I've got now is, um, well it's more me, it's more browns and, um, and greens and autumn fall colours, you know me. <laughs> so yeah, so that is for the blanket as well. And then I've got one more. This is a super dark forest green, in fact that's a very nice colour. I can see myself now guys. Am I just staring off to the side because there is a screen there now. Whereas before I could never see and I couldn't see the horrible, horrible lighting that was going on and the in and out of focus. 
I'm sorry about last week guys, it's horrible wasn't it? Anyway, this is some very very early hand spun that I did on the Ashford Traditional when I used to go to um, weekly meetings at the Spinners of Air. Um, and I had all their extra bobbins in a bag and I didn't realise I had lots of their things and um, all this fibre was already spun, it just hadn't been plied so it's a little, little bit of a bonus, I've already had lots of this, I think I still got some of this fibre to be honest um, so yeah, it's a little, little mini skein so I just did a little bit of plying and that finished that as well so quite a bit of spinning I also um, had fun spinning a rainbow so this is uh, the other half because I've, I've spun, are you ready? <laughs> I spun and then knit the sock <laughs> and still haven't spun the other half. Okay, <laughs> so this fibre is from, let's have a little look, Siobhan's Crafts. Again, this was from my friend Gwen and she was doing a D-stash. So this is Siobhan Craft, who actually I went to go see it yeah, earlier this year. I didn't buy anything from Siobhan, but she had some lovely. These uh, rainbows are really good. Um, so it's a one of a kind, and it's 95% Rambouillet and 5% Sparkler, and it is really sparkly. You can see. <laughs> so. But yeah, I enjoyed spinning it and then I chain plied and then I knit the sock and I thought I really really want the whole sock. Um, it doesn't really fit on the blocker. Um, but yeah, so I knit from the toe up. I did um, a German short row heel and then I just knit 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 and kept going and thought as soon as it turned into this like bit of blue there, I uh, started the ribbon. But yeah, giant super sparkly socks. Now, originally I did think I might give these to my grandma. Uh, my grandma is 93 and she's just gone to live in um, in a new home and she really likes it there. Um, but she likes really big socks and I thought I can give her these. She will really, really like them. And then I thought she's just gone into a new home and I'm going to give them hand spun wool socks. They are going to shrink them in seconds. Now I personally worked in um, an old people's home for 15 years. It was a rehab centre and uh, people used to come and stay with us. If they'd had a broken hip or whatever, they'd come and stay while they recuperated. We'd give them physio, get them back on their feet and then go back home again. Um, and I once shrunk a lady's cashmere jumper and I cried a little bit. Um, I didn't realise, I was 21. I didn't know what wool was, I just shoved everything in the wash and shoved everything in the tumble dryer. Because that's what you do when you're busy at work. <laughs> but yeah, I just thought I cannot give, although my grandma would really like them, they wouldn't last for very long. So these are going to be mine, because they fit me too. <laughs> so I just need to spin the other half now, I did get a bit giddy about spinning the rainbow and then, yeah. I've got another one to do, but now what's happened is I went to Yarndale and I bought lots of fibre and got excited and felt full of energy and full of, oh, I felt full of fibre again. Guys, the, the lack of mojo has been so real. I've just, I've not been bothered by any of it. And I think what's happened is I've just become so uninspired by um, my stash. So as, some, as most of you know, I started de-stashing um, all my fibre about two years ago and I just got about a year into de-stashing and then Covid hit and I like to buy all my fibre and, and all my yarn by squishing and festivals. So actually I've just slowly been getting rid of my stash for about three years now and there's, it's, it's down to one little drawer that's all that's left. Um, and I love everything in there, I don't want to get rid of it and I do want to use it but do you know I just feel so like meh, I don't want to do that right now there's lots of Jameson and Smith that's to do some really nice colour work with but I just mm, uh, I just <laughs> uninspired but going back to the festival, going back to Yandale on Saturday was so nice just being able to see all of 
like-minded people enjoying like-minded things. Um, it was lovely. It, it was really, really nice. I really, really enjoyed myself. So, would you like to see what I got? I know you do. I know you're so excited by it. Oh, it's all down. It's all down here. Okay. Can you guess where my big purchase was from? <laughs> In my giant dusty dimples bag is my entire haul. So, if it's in one talk, guys, I was very restrained. I enjoyed what I bought, but I didn't go giant crazy. I've realised I like to buy for a project in mind. I can't go around and go, I like that, I like that. Because I do. I like it all. Mm -hmm. Have it all, but I can't have it sitting, being uninspired in a drawer. It does, it's just, I need a project. So, I was talking to my lovely girls, Zoe of uh, Felicity Yarn Studios and Naomi of um, The Yarn Curator and we were talking about, I was, I was talking about how uninspired I am and I needed to know what's on their lists and I think it was Zoe? Zoe said she was going to do The Laurel by Alonga Vekana. Now I love, love, love looking at her patterns and it's been one of her patterns has been on my list for a while and I just haven't been able to um, decide which one and as soon as they showed me a picture, in fact, can I, can I show you a picture? I want to show you what I'm doing. How nice is that? How nice is that? So, I really want I think Zoe mentioned that she'd like to spin the contrast colour. So that was it then. I'm in. I'm taking over uh, Zoe's ideas and I'm going to spin the contrast colour for Laurel. So I picked up Rattling. This is by Felt Studio. It's hand dyed merino wool and silk and it's 70% and 30%. Um, I just fell in love with these colours, they just, I thought they were really, really nice. Now, I tried to pick something that was quite similar to what the sample was, um, something with blues and purples, because it's not normally me, I am, you're all laughing at me because you know that I'm just a, an autumn kind of girl, um, and this is very mermaid, but I do really, really like it. Um, and because I was so excited for um, this, I, I already, I already started spinning it. <laughs> so I actually brought two. I actually bought two. So already um, on my bobbins of my electric ear wheel, the Nano. And because I thought I really wanted to get um, a nice luxury fibre um, to spin through. And I think I've only ever spun one thing with silk in it before. Um, and yeah, it's very, very enjoyable. It's got quite a bit of silk going through it as well. Because it's 30%, actually you can just pull out big chunks of it out of the fibre and it just looks... It's just lush, it's really, really nice and um, super fun. So that's the fibre. But I didn't want to spin the full body, I just wanted to do the contrast. So from Dusty Dimples, oh, it is full of fluff. Oh dear, I'm going to have to defluff. Defuzz, defuzz, defuzz. So I got this like super deep dark purple blue black is it like and it just oh I'm so in love with it let's see if I can can you see that's a little bit better I have noticed this very there's a very white bit here I'm kind of hoping there's another bit of it somewhere I'm just gonna flick through but oh yeah there's some more around here yeah! This. Oh, 
So, the laurel. This is going to be a jumper. Sorry, I didn't say what this is, is it? It's um, Dusty Dimples. <laughs> dusty Dimples, and it's her Dusty Sock. So it's 25% Superwash Merino and 25% Nylon, and the colour is Blued. 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 <laughs> so, one project purchased. Project number two. And you look at this and you go, Gemma, there you are. There are your colours. Okay, so I picked up this sock set and it's by Ainsworth Prin and it's on a standard sock. So it's 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon, 80-20. Um, and these don't have any colour names, but actually, um, this set came, this colour wasn't in it. Let's see if you can see more of a, oh no, it's kind of accurate. Um, yeah, it came with like a green, which looked lovely, but this was also next to it on another sock set and they all had different colors. Um, so I did a little swap -rooney. Well, the lady did, she was very kind. Um, and did a little swap for me. And I think these, I would really, really like to knit the Waiting for Henry socks by Tabitha Gandhi. Um, I've always, I've like admired them for ages but they're colour work socks and I've tried colour work socks three times now and I haven't been able to get the tension right. Um, I'm going to do it one more time, I'm going to try. I'm getting low battery. Okay, new battery. <laughs> That's already low, oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, new space, who this, yeah, it's still me, it's still a hot mess. We still can't learn to podcast. Okay, so that was the uh, Waiting for Henry socks by Tabitha Gandhi. I think that, that pattern would really suit those socks, those colours. So, what else did I buy? <laughs> I'm going to do the stitch markers because seriously, that, that is just hear them. So, I just bought some small stitch markers. The Coco Knits. Um, I've got to admit, I can't remember which stall I bought these from because there was quite a few that were selling it. Um, and I keep seeing it around. I was like, right, the third time it's pointed out to me. But they're very, very small. They are just plain. But yeah, really, really tiny. Um, oh, 4.5 millimeters. Like tiny little stitch markers. I thought it was really cute. I've got to admit, <laughs> I didn't see the how small they were. There was a few that was open and you could see how big they were and there must have been a medium one. And I've picked up the small but not read the packet properly. Anyway, I got some small stitch markers. And I also got the um, Leica Licker? Licker needles, um, 3.75 size. I have one pair of these um, already and I really, really enjoy them. And I got the 3.25, and uh, sorry, 3.25 and 3.75 are my usual sweater gauge. Um, so I, yeah, for four ply yarn. So I got myself, um, I think the denim, indigo. It's the indigo colour. Um, but hopefully, they, I think my other set are Driftwood, um, but yeah, so they're my little notions that I got. I also got myself some more fibre. How pretty is this? Let me have a little, little wind up. So this, oh god, it feels so soft. It is, again, by um, the Felt Studio. She had some really nice stuff. I think I picked up about five different ones. Um, I was walking around with them for ages. Uh, I find I, I put it down and I just picked this one. But it's um, super fine merino wool, wool with yak and silk. So it's 60, 20, 20. And it's really, really soft. Um, I think I might make this into... Uh, something for a colour work yoke again. I think it's really, really nice. And then 
I don't know, I don't know what colour I'd go with it though. But yeah. Really, really nice. And that's it. That's it. That's all I got. Totally lame. <laughs> So I also got one more. So this is um, from Captain Sparrow and it's called Weird Sisters. Uh, it's 100% Blue Faced Leicester, an Exmoor breed. And I thought it kind of, um, it gave me bonfire night vibes, like super dark skies with a little fire. And I, I liked, I just thought it reminded me of picture that I just painted so that's why I got this one. Oh, I've got like a brand now look at this don't set your fibre on fire no I'm miles away from it I'm, <laughs> I'm an idiot um, but yeah I really really liked it I thought it'd be super fun to to, uh, to spin and uh, Blue Face Lester is actually really quite good for socks so I might get a really nice pair of uh, fireside socks out of that one and that's all I got that's all I got so very reserved don't you think four four skeins of yarn with two minis and uh, four braids of fiber a pair of needles and some stitch markers I think that is I think you can call that perfect for Yarndale perfect festival it was lovely I really really enjoyed it um, I got to meet some new friends and some old friends. Um, I really enjoyed Dusty Dimple's, um, what's it called? Space. Her stall. Her stall. It was so beautifully done. In fact, I think she's just put an Instagram story or a, a reel or something on her grid. It's on a grid of um, her stall all being set up. It's beautiful, it looks lovely. I think when you can walk away from um, a festival and say that was the prettiest stall, you can win. There you go, you won Yarndale Dusty Dimples, it was beautiful. Um, somebody else did that for me a couple of years ago, I can't remember what it was, like, the Wool Barn. The Wool Barn got that, like I think it was about three years ago. 2019. Um, I might, maybe it was the year before, I can't remember, so I cannot stop staring at myself. I look hot today though, right? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I think that's everything that I wanted to tell you about. I'm, I'm sure there's lots and lots and lots more. I have got my bags and my needle cases available in my Etsy. Let me show you the stack. things are now available to buy in my Etsy store. Um, thank you to everybody who came on the early bird from Instagram. Um, I actually managed to sell out of two of the different styles so um, thank you very much for that, I appreciate it. So these are my needle cases. I've got two of each I think now. Two of each now. So I've got this one with the, the pink, with the green zip. <laughs> I've got the same, but this guy has got orange with the orange zip. And I've got two of the pink on the outside. And I've just got one of this guy left, who that's very blown out. That's a little bit better. Um, and this guy is purple inside, let me show you. So these needle holders, I got to say, I really, really enjoyed sewing them. They take a lot of sewing. Um, I think about 20 hours each to, to finish each one. Uh, but this one's mine, I'll just show you mine. My guy, I got one of the orange guys. Um, he's awful. Awful, awful. <laughs> and he's upside down. I bet that proves like guys, they were designed so nothing falls out. A little needle gauge there is just going to prove me wrong. <laughs> um, but they have got all your crochet hooks, your interchangeable needles, on one on there and one on that. Somewhere to put all your circulars. 
big pockets on the inside and then a zippy doodle on the back for scissors and whatnot. Um, but yeah, they're there and they are available in my Etsy shop right now. As well as the needle cases, there, <laughs> there are also the vintage bags. So some of you might remember if you've been here a while, my friend gifted me this fabric and it was from her mother-in-law. It's got to be from the 50s, but it's absolutely stunning. It's 70s, 70s. It's not the 50s, is it? Don't be taking it too far, Gemma. It's 50 years old, which is what was in my head. So I've got lots of different designs. Again, I've sold out two of the, the, the opposite ones of each of these. So they've, they've already gone. Um, thank you to everybody that bought. Uh, but these are all shawl sized. I'd say you could get a oh, nice big bucket. Um, I just had like three or four skeins in there. I, I like to squish mine. So three very comfortably with a project. But if you want to squish a few more in there. <laughs> also, I, I don't mind just squishing it in. You know that. Um, but lots of all the different designs of this as well. So just pow, pow, pow. <laughs> oh no, don't hurt them. Um, but they are all in the Etsy shop right now. Please go buy them. <laughs> I would like a new sewing machine. <laughs> so most of you guys know I worked uh, in an old people's home for 15 years um, but I haven't been at work now. Well James is three and a half um, and I left on maternity leave and I just haven't been back. I've had um, what's called a career break so I took an unpaid leave and I was actually supposed to be due to go back to work next week. However, my work is closing down and they well, uh, they've asked me to extend my leave until the end of December and then they're going to pay me to leave basically. So actually I get a little bit of a payout um, and I'm not going to be going back to work, which works just beautifully for me because let's face it, I didn't want to go back to work. I enjoy being at home and living my crafty life. But if... Um, Basically, if I go back to work, it's going to cost more in childcare than it is for me to stay at home and see if I can just make a little money to pay for my own hobby. So that is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be starting doing a few little bits and bats to put in my Etsy shop, like the needle cases, like the, the bags. Um, I, I really giddily have been cleaning out all of my cupboards and uh, my fabric stores. I found a pair of my neighbour's jeans. <laughs> yes, you, you heard me. So people find out that you sew and they automatically come to you with their jeans that have their ass ripped out of them. Like you've worn these to death. You don't need the repair on them, but they were Armani. Anyway, I found my friend's jeans in my cupboard. They must have been there for six months. I felt a little guilty about that. You just take lots of projects and just go, yeah, I'll fix them, it's fine. Just shove it in a cupboard. Anyway, I've been digging through all my stuff. I found some really nice wool and some denim. All my leftovers from my coat, which is some really, really nice Liberty fabric. Um, anyway, I've been making more bags. I know, just um, so. <laughs> If you look out in my Etsy shop, in the next couple of weeks there will actually be more different designs as well. Some really nice wool ones, some Liberty ones. Um, but yeah. So no more work. I've For a couple of months now there's been a little bit of a... Whether I am going back to work, what do I actually want to do. I was probably going to be leaving anyway. I don't think the idea of me going back to work would given this big long leave just so I could make up my make making my mind so actually I think I might have been leaving anyway I hadn't decided I hadn't. Um, but yeah it's closed so it's a real shame because actually it was a lovely home um, everybody loved it it was 
I think it had quite a bit of a petition uh, within the local community to try and keep it open but sadly it just run the end of its life because it was a trial it was part of the local council, it was a trial to see how um, it works to get people back on their feet and back home and actually the scheme worked and it just got rolled out with, throughout the whole of West Yorkshire um, um, throughout the whole of Leeds throughout the whole of Leeds Gemma <laughs> um, so yeah it was, a lovely, it was a lovely scheme, it was it was a pilot so but the pilot's finished it was a 15 year pilot, it worked, it was lovely um, it was nice to see all those um, people come in unable to walk and not be able to do things and then they get to go back home, it was nice. Um, yeah, it's come to an end. But not for me. Season two, baby! <laughs> okay, I think that's everything. Guys, thank you so much for coming to join me talk about all the things that I've been making. I will really like to see you in a couple of weeks time thanks guys for staying all the way to the end i really really appreciate it um if you want to leave me a comment down below that would be awesome i love to get to know what you guys are up to what you're doing what you're knitting what you're making give me some more inspiration please i need lots and um yeah like and subscribe and all yeah you know what you're doing thank you so much guys for all your support see you later bye